Have you ever thought about hosting your own cloud storage solution? It's a lot easier than it seems, thanks to Unraid. If this sounds interesting to you, then stick around. Hi there, I'm John with Fillmore.Tech. In today's video, I'm going to be doing a quick walkthrough of a popular cloud storage solution called Nextcloud. We are going to be installing it on Unraid, which makes it very simple to get up and running. Some prerequisites before we begin, you're going to need a server or a computer that's already set up with Unraid. If you don't already have one, I'll go ahead and link to a video down below and also probably post a card uh, on either the top left or the top right from the one and only Space Invader 1. His tutorials can get you through installing Unraid on any computer rather quickly. Now if you already have Unraid installed on your computer, then let's go ahead and get Nextcloud installed. It's going to require two things. You're going to need a database, which we're going to use uh, MariaDB for the database, and then of course Nextcloud. It's a lot easier than it was, I'd probably say about a year ago, just because they simplified the installation for MariaDB. So let's begin. So if this is the first time you are installing Nextcloud, the first thing that we're going to want to do is create a share for where our data is going to be stored on our Unraid server. To do that, you would go up to the Shares tab, click on Add Share, and then name the share. I've already done this and named my share Nextcloud. So this is where all of my Nextcloud data and anything I upload to Nextcloud, whether it be a document, photos from my phone, or anything like that. So once you've got that done, second thing that we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna want to install our MariaDB database. Now to install MariaDB, you're gonna wanna go up to the Apps tab, which will bring you to the Community Applications Store. Now the Community Applications Store is not installed by default on Unraid, even though I think it should be, but if you don't see this App tab up here, that means you don't have the community applications application installed yet. In order to do so, and it'll make li your life a lot easier, is if you, you know, install it. I'll go ahead and leave another link down below in the description box, and also show up in one of the cards on the upper left or right of the video, to another Space Invader 1 video teaching you how to install the community applications app into Unraid. Once you have it installed though, go ahead and uh, click on the search bar and type in MariaDB. This will show you all of the available MariaDB Docker containers that you can deploy. The one that I like to use is any of the Docker templates from Linux servers repository. So I'm going to go ahead and click on MariaDB, click on this, and click on install. And this should bring us to the template. Now in the template, there isn't very much that you have to change. You can go ahead and pretty much leave everything from the web UI on up unchanged. Just leave it as is. But just remember that the UI for MariaDB is going to be on port 3306. We're going to want to change the MySQL root password. Now you're going to want to choose a pretty strong password. What I do is I actually create a password through Bitwarden or Vaultwarden, whichever you use, or any password manager, and just create a strong password there. But for this tutorial, I'm going to choose a not so secure password. But it's going to be my secure root password and exclamation mark. Next thing we're going to want to change is the database. We're going to want to name the database. And I call mine nextcloud underscore db. And now we're going to want to create a user for our database. And we're going to set this to nextcloud. Scroll down a little, 
Now we're going to want to give a password to this user. Again, you're going to want to make this a pretty strong password. I, On my password manager, my minimum is like 20. So all of my pa random passwords are going to be 20 characters or more. Um, I only change it when you've got websites that need something less than that. But I'm going to go ahead and make this database password to be my secure db password exclamation mark and you can leave remote uh, sql as is you don't need to do anything there and just click apply All right, and there it is. We'll go ahead and click on done. And you just created a MariaDB database. There's nothing else we've got to do. So the next thing we're going to want to install is going to be Nextcloud. And we're going to type in Nextcloud. Again, this is going to show you all of the available uh, Docker templates that you can deploy. Uh, Linux servers repository has one right here, so I'm going to go ahead and click on that and click on install. And once you get to this screen, uh, where to like choose a branch to install, I always use default. Default is usually the latest uh, version of Nextcloud, so I'm going to go ahead and click on that. Which brings us to the Nextcloud Docker template. Again, this is all pretty self-explanatory. Just look over here. We've got the web UI set at port 443. We're gonna change that because there are other services that use 443, uh, probably like your router or um, other network device that you try to connect to securely. Uh, so we're gonna change this to port 444 or something else another port that you're not using. So if you're using 444 already, change that to something different. But I'm not using 444 on this server, so we should be good. And over here for the data path, this is gonna be the share that you created for, Next, for Nextcloud, where all of your data is gonna be stored. So click on Click on that box right there and scroll down until you see your share, which is right here, Nextcloud. Click away from it and then click on apply. Again, this part might take a minute, but it should be done once you see the done box on the bottom. All right, and it's finished. That actually didn't take as long as I thought it was going to take. So we'll click done. Now that's still gonna be installing. It's running a few things in the background. So right now we're not able to access Nextcloud. Uh, it'll take about a minute or so. One thing that you can do to find out uh, at what stage you're in or when Nextcloud is done uh, loading and installing is go to your Docker. scroll down to Nextcloud, click on the icon for Nextcloud, and click on Logs. Now when you click on the logs, you'll come up to this screen. This is the log for the container that uh, Nextcloud is in. Now while we're waiting here, if you are enjoying this type of content or you're seeing some value with this video, please go ahead and hit that thumbs up button It'll let YouTube know that this is something that, you know, is going to be useful for other people to learn about how to install Nextcloud. Plus, it helps the channel. So I greatly appreciate it. If you like this kind of content, go click on that subscribe button and the notification bell icon right beside it. That will notify you when I've uploaded a new video to the channel. And there you go. So once you see it say ls.io-init done. Uh, the Docker container is up and running and you're able to visit Nextcloud. So we'll go, we'll exit out of here, open up a new browser, 
and it's going to be on a uh, secure site so you're going to want to hit https colon slash slash and enter the IP address of your server if you don't know what that IP address is go into your router dashboard and see if you can locate the IP address that was assigned to your router or I'm sorry to your server so we'll go uh, for me it's gonna be 10.0.10.7 and we want to go to port 444 press enter you might be greeted with a screen like this uh, but it, it should be okay for you to continue on since I mean this is on your own server so click on advanced accept the risk and continue and there you go you're on your you're at the login screen for nextcloud now that we have nextcloud up and running first thing that we're going to want to do is create an admin account as stated here for that i'm just going to go ahead and use uh create the username admin you can name it whatever you want password is going to be something that you will remember obviously best thing is to create another secure password or a strong password um, but for this tutorial we're gonna go with uh, password one two three four exclamation let's see if it's gonna like that it's saying that it's a weak password but uh, let's try it yeah so the password one two three four exclamation um, all right then click on storage and database data that's the what we are mapping or what we mapped in the uh, next cloud template of where we are storing all of our data so anything that you upload or just store in next cloud uh, Next, we're going to go ahead and con configure the database. We're going to click on um, MySQL MariaDB since we're going to be using a MariaDB database. And here we're going to enter the information that we put in the MariaDB template. So if you recall, the database username that we created was Nextcloud. Now we got to enter the database password. This isn't going to be the root password that we put in the template. Uh, this is going to be the uh, database user password. So that is going to be my secure DB password exclamation, right? Yep. And then we named this database nextcloud underscore DB. Now for the database host, you will want to put in the IP address of your server. In my case again, it's 10.0.10.7. And as long as you didn't change the port number that the MariaDB uh, database uses, uh, it's going to be 3306. And we'll go ahead and click on install. Let I'm hoping that it's gonna like this password, but let's find out. So clicking install. Now you may get this 504 gateway timeout. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and try to log into there again. And there you go. Now it went to that error just because it was starting, for some reason something got hung up and uh, it timed out. So it created, it looks, it looks like it went ahead and created that account though. So let's give it a try. Let's hit, let's have the account name, the admin path, the admin username is admin. Password again was password. One, two, three, four, with the exclamation. Let's make sure. Yep, and log in. And there you go. You've successfully installed Nextcloud 
on your server. Let's go ahead and just skip over to the right, go through all of this, host your data and files where you decide, and open. Nextcloud is completely open source. It has a really good community also, if uh, you ever want to check that out, especially on Reddit. You can install uh, different apps like Calendar, uh, Contacts, you can do mail. I actually use the mail function and that's where I pretty much just read all of my uh, emails that come into the philomore.tech domain. And you've also got the different apps. So they've got a des desktop app uh, as well as an uh, the app store you, to get it on your iPhone, iPad, um, anything like that. And yeah, so let's go ahead and click right. And this is actually new. Uh, you can go ahead and click here and become part of the community. You can, uh, like I said, it's a very welcoming community. Uh, if you have any issues, you can usually go there, post your question, and get an answer. And let's go ahead and just start using Nextcloud. And now, what you can do is you can just go ahead and start um, putting in some new uh, some new files if you want. And just like on uh, Google Drive, you've got all of your files here. Uh, so if you click on files, it'll have uh, some default files, default folders in here. You've got your documents folder, photos, um, some other templates, and it even has a Nextcloud manual in PDF format over here that you can um, download. Uh, if you go into photos, you can store all of your photos in here. You've got uh, the ability to share photos as well. Uh, that's going to be beyond the scope of what we are going through today. But uh, you pretty much have uh, your basic Nextcloud server. Now, the way that it is set up at the moment, you can only access your server uh, locally on your network. Or if you're more advanced and you know how to connect a VPN, you can VPN into your network and use it that way when you're away from home. Um, but yeah, that's... Uh, I will go ahead and create a different video on how we can actually put this behind a reverse proxy, which is how I run my server. And it allows me to access my server from outside my network and use as a domain name that I own. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, uh, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Really will help the channel. And again, my goal is to get up to 100 subscribers, reach 100 sub subscribers by the end of January. Now, if, and if you like this sort of content, go ahead and click that subscribe button and hit the notification bell icon to be notified whenever I upload some new content. Until next time, you guys, stay safe, happy holidays, and I will catch you on the next one. Peace.